Well, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm very exacting with my students as to the way they use the English language because it's their principal tool. And so I try and be exacting and say, I'm not only honored by your presence, but very humbled by your presence. General Rowney, thank you, sir, for coming. Minister Naimsky and delegation from New York City and uh, many others. My topic is uh, America unreliable, Poland expendable, a commentary on the alliance between Poland and the United States. Uh, and I want to warn you in advance, this is an opinion and it is quite pessimistic. In my opinion, under Obama, the Polish-American alliance within the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is fast crumbling into a facade. Based on President Obama's record of repeated broken promises, Poland's interests are always disposable to satisfy Obama's desires concerning Russia. Neither Poland's nor America's understanding of the alliance is realistic. Neither Poland's nor America's views of the alliance are based on strategic realities. Neither Poland's nor America's participation in the alliance is built on sufficiently increasing capabilities. Four years of Obama have provided more than sufficient evidence that the United States does not have a strategically coherent foreign policy. In Eastern Europe, the intermarium, the West's front towards Russia, the United States has no policy. Indeed, the Obama administration may have no interest in Eastern Europe as evinced in its actions and inactions. The administration's engagement in Eastern Europe, when necessitated, is at best inept, insensitive, and uninterested, and at worst, self-delusional and dangerous to Eastern Europe, indeed to all Europe, and ultimately to itself. The American ignorance of and ignoring of Eastern Europe, including Poland, continues a history of fallacy and folly. The current foolhardiness is due in largest part to Obama himself abetted by his enraptured epigony in the executive branch, Democratic Party members and not a few Republican Party members in the Congress, and most notably, the supine Joint Chiefs of Staff. Some of these are deliberately impelling and facilitating the decline of the United States as a superpower, a strategic catastrophe of the profoundest consequence. And not only the Poland, uh, others in their intellectual inertia and ethical indolence are unresistant to the decline. And still others are simply oblivious to the decline. Poland joined the North Atlantic Treaty Organization uh, simply for one reason, so as to have the United States defended against Russia a guaranteed American defense, never mind the unfulfilled guarantees of 1939. The likely threat from Russia today and for tomorrow is not one of military invasion, but rather one of slow, subtle, cumulative multiple pressures in diplomacy, economics, energy, and ethnic minorities combined with saber rattling falsehoods and subversion insufficient to force a NATO or American response. Nevertheless, the deterring of such mostly unclear and indirect threats must be backed by the United States alert, rapid reacting, tough and certain diplomacy and its able and credible military force. The United States <coughs> excuse me the United States, in applying its own absurd, cowardly, budgetary cop-out, the sequestration, 
is reducing the number of its armed forces and their equipment and training and weakening its ability to deploy them abroad. None of the European NATO members shows any will to develop actual, credible, adequate military capabilities to defend themselves, much less other alliance members. The United Kingdom, France, Germany, and Poland are the only European NATO members who in the past actually allocated at least 2% of their gross national product to their armed forces, mostly for their own defense and not for complementary or interoperable alliance capability. These countries, for financial reasons, have now declared their inability to allocate even these niggardly sums. Unfortunately, the outlook for the West defense capabilities is that of a wasting asset. This deliberate weakening of America's military strength, coupled with its repeated demonstrated lack of will to intervene in other regions, lessens the deterrence of threats against its allies, including Russia's persistent long-term threat to Poland. The lack of want and will to oppose overt aggression portends a concomitant failure to recognize and defend against any particular unarmed Russian threat to Poland's sovereignty and independence, especially if it is indecisive in itself. Moreover, if it came to the military or political defense of Poland, the European members of NATO would certainly not act without United States leadership. Based on Obama's leading from behind, the United States would await the emergence of a European coalition of the willing and able, not only from New Europe, but mainly from old Europe. The United Kingdom and Germany would be essential to such a coalition. The Europeans are at present emphatically neither willing nor able to participate in such a coalition and will be less able and less willing to do so in the future. The United States shows not the slightest indication that it will lead from front or behind in defense of Poland. If it came to an open, immediate, existential threat to Poland, most probably the United States and the European members of NATO would dither over the meaningless details of a pointless diplomacy whose inherent and foreseeable result would be appeasement of Russian demands. In such circumstances, it is doubtful that Poland could oppose and survive a threat to its sovereignty from Russia, even with some historically reminiscent grand and gallant beau geste. Obama, if required, apparently is prepared and perhaps anxious to subordinate Poland's security interests under some guise to the obstinately self-delusional solicitation of a friendly strategic partnership with Russia, notwithstanding that the Putin regime, in particular the leadership of the Russian armed forces, continues to designate the United States as the Glavny Vrag, the main enemy, as the Soviet leadership did throughout the Cold War. Similarly, a large majority of the Polish people, of the Russian people, still consider that the United States is the main threat to Russia. Obama's willful pursuit of a strategic partnership with Russia, a country that contests the validity of American principles and values and reflexively rejects American objectives as a matter of policy, would result in a classic mesalliance, a grotesque oxymoron. Evidently, based on the open mic incident with Medvedev, uh, reneging on the missile defense shield on the anniversary of the invasion of Poland by Soviet Russia, let us remember, in alliance with Hitler, and the second partial cancellation of the stationing of an American missile defense shield in Poland just last month, Obama is inclined to pay almost any price particularly at an ally's expense, to buy Russia's partnership, even just the rhetorical partnership. 
Obama has practiced a policy of preemptive unilateral concessions towards Russia. So far, in addition to the betrayal of the Poles, Czechs, and Romanians, Obama's payments to Russia have included the abandonment of Belarus and Ukraine and a cancellation of Georgia's candidacy for NATO membership. Obama pursues his chimera despite the fact that Russia's policies are reflexively anti-Western and anti-American. Putin's declared aims remain the same as Soviet aims, namely the prevention of the expansion of NATO to any of the states that were constituents of the defunct Soviet empire, the withdrawal from NATO of the former European member states of the dissolved Warsaw Pact, the removal of the United States from the European continent, and the replacement of NATO in Europe with a Russian a Russian-led security sphere. Moreover, Putin has brooded it about that further expansion of NATO into the territory of the former Soviet Union would be a casus belli. In simple terms, Russia is seeking what the Soviet Union failed to conquer, effective Russian hegemony over Europe, and Poland is the gateway. Russia is also seeking a reconstruction of the Russian Empire in the Central Asiatic Stans, the Caucasus, the Baltics, and Ukraine. Without Ukraine, there can be no Russian Empire. Ultimately, Poland's strategic security position requires a Ukraine that is independent and is not a Russian satellite. Putin, to assist in achieving his aims, has begun to rebuild and expand Russian military capabilities. He has extended the claimed sphere of Russian defense with nuclear weapons to include Ukraine and the Stans. Indeed, Ukraine is essential to Putin's so far successful ambitions. Obama's callous treatment of Poland has alienated the United States' most loyal ally in NATO to the extent that it has raised doubts about the constancy and reliability, the reality and sincerity of the American commitment to the defense of Poland. Poland made a long-term strategic investment in the United States with a commitment of a very large, competent combat force to the support of American national interests, not Polish national interests, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Obama repaid Poland with strategic disinterest in Poland's and NATO's most immediate defense interests. The United States' historic Atlanticist support for Europe has been replaced with the effective American withdrawal from NATO. As a result, Poland has turned westward to the European Union, whose entire military capabilities reside in a headquarters military staff manned mostly by French officers charged with future planning founded on a vision of France's leadership of Europe and special relationship with Russia. A fantasy of Gallic glory as a substitute for NATO is defense. The Polish, to, or this Polish turn coupled with European, especially German indifference to Ukraine's fate, Ukraine's abandonment of its invitation to join NATO and the United States' abandonment of Ukraine to Russia as part of the American reset have opened Poland's and NATO's strategic flank in Ukraine to Russia. Poland's turn to and dependence on the European Union effectively arrogates control of its defense and foreign policies and cedes the conditions of the ultimate determination of its sovereignty to the European Union's strongest and most decisive state, Germany. Poland's session of its future to Brussels, an apparatus overstuffed with bloviating politicians and regulation-obsessed bureaucrats, is supposed to protect Poland's fundamental sovereign national interests. Poland will depend on a Brussels as pretensions to be the continent's capital, but is yet to produce common defense and foreign policies and any ability and power to execute them. 
Furthermore, Germany has shown that it is as much interested in pursuing its own reset, that is a European strategic partnership with Russia led by Germany, notably at the same probable cost to Eastern Europe. Germany has abandoned Ukraine and the Caucasus and is likely to make compromises with Russia at New, Russia, at New Europe's expense, particularly in the Baltics and Poland. <clears throat> Yet Poland is bent hell for leather in transforming itself into a mirror image and merging completely into Western Europe. As Poland apes its Western neighbors, it, become, it begins to succumb to the European disease. The transformation is founded on the adoption of a relativism prevailing in Western Europe. Such mimicry of Western Europe undermines Poland's best interest in political, economic, and social life and introduces a decadence that leads to decline. It introduces those unique traits and traditions, values, and virtues that historically have made Poland what it is. The more the Poles become European, the less they remain Polish. In short, they are in danger of losing their national character. The sainted Karol Wojtyła must be spinning in his grave. A self-referential relativism also debilitates the United States. The United States can no longer form a cultural, social, and political consensus on its principles, values, objectives, and obligations. As a result, the United States increasingly cannot agree on, formulate, and practice a consistently principled and strategically coherent, that is, a realistic foreign policy. What the Obama administration, informed by self-deception and its own national interests, practices is a passive, reactive, ad hoc, so-called pragmatic foreign policy that views each issue sui generis. Such a policy is unrelated to reality is not sustainable and demeans America's history. A foreign policy so constructed and practiced cannot be moral if it is based on the relativism of values and principles, and such a policy cannot be successful if it cannot distinguish good from bad. If a policy is not moral, then it does not apprehend reality. Thus, this is a foreign policy that yields only the most acceptable, least objectionable, most expedient, and the easiest, usually short-term solutions based on the least involvement and commitment of the United States. A self-referential society cannot understand and interact successfully with states who are clear and consistent in the pursuit of their long-range interests. This is the American foreign policy on which Poland depends. Poland, of course, has no choice except to depend on NATO and the United States for its defense. Nevertheless, there are some measures that Poland can initiate to improve its, de its defense and to protect its rear unilaterally. However, there is one measure that Poland ought to undertake that, proceeds, that precedes all others and that would improve the ability of the success or the possibility of the success of those other measures. Poland needs to resolve the moral ambiguity in its political life. Poland needs to purge the poison of the collaborators who protect and advance foreign interests inimical to their own country. These agents of influence, spies and saboteurs who are seated in the media academia, the church, armed forces, intelligence service, legislature, and government departments need to be identified and removed from their posts and public life. It is their pernicious influence that, among other despicable incidents, resulted in the Polish acceptance of Russian insulting and patently lying explanation of the Russian engineered Smolensk air crash tragedy that decapitated the anti-Russian Polish national leadership. Poland cannot adopt a foreign policy that is realistic and strategic 
that is only informed solely by its own national interests, so long as these traitorous influences infect Polish life. Externally, Poland could do more for its own defense, although most of these measures are dependent on the cooperation of the United States and NATO. Most importantly, Poland ought to have pressed and ought now to press the United States to conduct an extensive and intensive joint covert action program against Russia in the Ukraine. If the United States refuses its participation, Poland should undertake a unilateral program. Poland ought also to mount a protracted, intensive diplomatic, economic, and public relations campaign to oust the illegitimate Russian occupation and Russia's nuclear weapons from the so-called Kaliningrad exclave. At the same time in NATO, Poland should insist on the rapid production of long overdue NATO defense plans and specific force commitments to Eastern Europe, especially for the Baltics and Poland itself. Poland should also take the lead in NATO to redefine Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty to include cyber attacks based on such deliberately aggressive hostile incidents as the Russian attack on Estonia. Poland should lobby the American administration and Congress to increase the number of deployments of U.S. Army and Air Force combat units into Poland, the stationing of a U.S. Navy Aegis frigate in Dynia, and of course, the retraction of the cancellation of the emplacement of the complete U.S. anti-ICBM interceptor missile shield on Polish soil. The Polish Air Force also should request <coughs> participation in the annual United States Air Force red flag exercise in Nevada, and of course the deployment of Polish squadrons for extensive training at United States Air Force bases, much as some of the German Luftwaffe's uh, fighter squadrons were formerly based permanently for several decades in the United States. The Polish Army ought to request participation in the U.S. Army's National Training Center exercises. Lastly, Poland should request conversion of part of its external debt, particularly those monies owed to the United States and European NATO member countries, estimated at $352 billion, about 70% of Poland's 2011 gross national product into credits for the procurement of modern armaments from the United States and Europe. And by the way, credit for this suggestion goes to Mr. Pablo Stenna. It's his completely originally, and he was kind enough to lend it to me. At some point, a conservative Polish government, subsequent to the present one, ought to mount a very strong campaign for an appropriate conservative Polish statesman to be chosen as NATO Secretary General to bring about a stronger and more realistic NATO defense posture and to recognize Poland's significant contribution to NATO. Unfortunately, of course, most of this will have to wait until Obama departs office. And by then, the strategic situation for the United States, Europe, and Poland is likely to have deteriorated even more. At one time, the large number of Polish Americans would respond to support Poland when it was in serious need of help. But that was in the past. Although Poland is now in need of strong support against a more subtle threat than in the past, the hope and expectation of such a mass rallying are forlorn. Although Obama's pragmatic policies and his reset or pursuit of a strategic partnership with Russia can only undermine Poland's defense, sovereignty, and independence. Yet Polish Americans, the Polonia, seem unaware and uncaring of all of this. The Polish Americans no longer engage in an informed ethnic politics, except for a few in the leaderships of the major national Polish American organizations. Most including those organizations headquartered in Obama's hometown, seem to evince no interest in these matters. Uh, yes. Close, yeah. I have a short time. Uh, Sorry. 
some major national Polish American organizations are much involved in American policy towards Poland, but on less consequential problems such as the visa issue. Most Polish Americans, particularly those of older emigrations, are abysmally ignorant of Poland. They show almost no interest in American foreign policy towards Poland, less than other ethnic groups on American policy concerning their ancestral lands. Polish Americans with succeeding generations have become less hyphenated, more American and less Polish. Moreover, Polish Americans cannot be mobilized, they once were. Polish Americans historically have voted for candidates of the Democratic Party, notwithstanding its long record of policies and actions inimical to Poland. Poland can no longer rely on the Polonia for any serious support on strategic issues of great importance. The once large Polish American voting bloc ought to have been mobilized on the important strategic long range issues of American foreign policy towards Poland, particularly on the fate of Ukraine. But Polish Americans have not been aware of these issues. The major national Polish American organizations have not informed and educated their members on these issues. There is even some doubt whether the leaders of these organizations of these organizations have themselves understood or cared about these consequential issues. Polish Americans have voted for Obama as they did for FDR, despite their betrayals of Poland. The Polish American alliance is in danger of being hollowed out by Obama behind a retained facade of elaborate organization and eloquent rhetoric. If there is a minor reason to be optimistic about the alliance's present, there is major reason to be pessimistic as to its future. Poles and Americans ought to understand what is at stake for themselves and for each other. Ignorance, inattention, and inaction will not prevent or indeed reverse the consequences of the current course. It is inadequate simply to outlast the current American and Polish governments hoping for the best. By then, the consequences of the irreversible will be irreversible as Poland proves dispensable. By then, the Polish-American alliance may be no more than a footnote in a historical document, and Poland will indeed be lost. Thank you.